In this video, we'll cover the basics of chip cloning, chip types, and methods to clone them. The most common thing people want to clone into their XEM or Next implant are access cards, work badges, or key fobs. These types of devices are typically based on 125kHz RFID technology. It's important to note that these technologies are not secure, which is why they can be cloned in the first place. The Atmel 5577 chip is capable of emulating all of these different 125kHz RFID technologies. This is why we chose the 5577 chip for our XEM and Next implants. Now let's take a look at some of the tools you can use to clone those device IDs into your implant. The infamous Blue Cloner is one of the many devices you can find on various websites including eBay, Alibaba, and Amazon. The problem with these types of devices is that you never know exactly what you're going to get. There could be any number of circuit boards or different code or anything in this device with the same exact blue shell and label. Typically though, the major problem with these blue cloners is that they only copy one type of device, usually either EM mode or HID mode devices, meaning you can only copy one type of source chip to your implant. There are other devices on the market, but they each have their own set of problems. The smaller one doesn't even read the XEM or Next implant, and the other larger cloner with the screen uses some sort of strange copying technique that leaves the T5577 chip in kind of a working but messed up state. So if these handheld cloners have problems, what should you use? If you want to get serious about RFID, you need to use a Proxmark 3. The Proxmark 3 was originally released as an open source RFID diagnostic and investigation tool. Because it was open source, many iterations followed of varying quality. But the version we recommend is the Proxmark 3 RDV4. The reason for this is that the Proxmark RDV4 has antennas that are designed specifically to talk to X-series tags. The reason this is important is that the T5577 chip does not have page tear protection. A tear is what happens when writing digital data to any storage medium gets interrupted. The data is incomplete and corrupted. If this tear occurs while writing the configuration data to the T5577, the chip itself becomes inoperable. In some cases, it can be recovered using the Proxmark 3 with special commands. This has been part one of our chip cloning series. Our next video will cover the process of cloning a low frequency tag to the T5577 chip with the Proxmark 3. Thanks for watching.